You are listening to a recording from the 2021 Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair. We would like to take a moment to thank the residency programs who have taken the time to present at our fair this year. This year's Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by Pumanar Recap, the best resource for your physiatry clinical preparation, audition rotations, board preparation, and beyond. Pumanar Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and even oral board cases. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. All right, so we will, I have a lot of slides, but I'm gonna to try to go fast. We have time for questions. I'm really excited to share about our program. Um, I'm Jen Calvis, a PGY4 resident and recruitment chief for this year. We also have Alex Heck, um, who'll be on the Zoom call with us. He'll be moderating the chat and hey, we'll get started. Okay, so we are, um, established an historical program with lots of alum, ranked in the top quartile of programs by US News and World Report. We have seven residents per year, three categorical residents and four advanced residents. Categor categorical positions do not have a separate IM interview and I did my um, IM year at Ohio State if you have any specific questions about that. We have a large robust faculty with about 32 faculty members and our blocks are eight week block rotations. This is just an example of the categorical prelim schedule. It's pretty typical. Note that Mickey was not mandatory, which is nice. And then our PM&R schedule, which is what you probably care most about. Um, so PGY2 year, we get a really good bulk of bread and butter, neuro rehab, very strong in that. Our blue are inpatient services that we rotate at our Dodd Hall Rehabilitation Hospital, brain injury, stroke, general rehab, and we get great inpatient pediatric exposure. I'm a little biased, I'm going into peds um, at Nationwide Children's, which is a top pediatric re, um, hospital in the country. And then we do um, outpatient as well our second year. We get hands-on early with procedures. Alex is going into pain. He's currently interviewing um, and he, even I'm not even interested in pain and I had my um, short block on outpatient and I already met my numbers to graduate. Alex has many, many numbers to graduate. And um, we get Botox early on, hands on early um, ultrasound as well. Orange is consult months that we have because we're the only program in Columbus. We have a unique opportunity to be able to do community based rotations as well. So you really see the different practice settings, including fourth year we come back to inpatient rehab, but as consultants at a community based hospital. Um, we have cancer rehab which is unique, spinal cord injury, um, and then dedicated sports rotations, um, dedicated outpatient pediatric exposure as well, and then plenty of time as you go further to do elective and selective and really um, find your niche in PM&R. Didactics are 12-month rotating didactic, didactic curriculums with longitudinal, longitudinal MSK course, um, including ultrasound, and we actually do them in the mornings. We get Tuesdays off. I really like that. Um, the further I got away from medical school, I realized how hard it was to pay attention for a whole afternoon to lectures. Um, and so we kind of start the morning fresh with a lecture. And those are our dedicated courses. And then board pass rate has been great. And then we have some really exciting new initiatives as well. Although we're an old established program, you know, we're constantly looking for positive change. Um, we have a new, PGY4 wellness social chief resident, which is Alex, who's on the call, and a PGY3 assistant social chair. Ultrasound is longitudinal now. So when we're learning about MSK knee, we're doing the cadaver lab. Then we're also doing the next week, the ultrasound dedicated to me, um, for example. One of our graduates just got signed on to help out in the inpatient rehab department, Tim Haik. Um, we have more diversity and inclusion curriculum this year, led by our faculty, Dr. Talley. More we currently have a mentorship program, um, but we're gonna do more career development with formal like CV workshops, things like that. Um, we have a lot of great research experience, which I'll touch on, but even trying to build up more robust research experience. And then we have a very exciting um, away rotation opportunity that started with one of our former alums who's now in Oregon. And he is an expert in electrodiagnostic medicine. We already do get great EMG exposure at Ohio State but he does a lot of unique things in private practice with EMG fraud and um, students can elect or residents can elect to spend two to four weeks with him and with lodging and food included, which is awesome. Um, we do home call, which is great. 
Note fourth year, we don't take any call, um, something to look forward to. And then PGY two year, it's still not bad. Um, you're doing six weekends and then on children's six weekends. Children's you do go in and round, but the lists are pretty small and um, the call, you don't get called a lot. And then on inpatient, the attendings round on the weekends, they write all the notes for us. So we don't have to, which is awesome. Um, and then we do a backup call just for helping with admissions. If you're not on the pager. Like I emphasized before, very robust neuro rehab at Ohio State. We're a traumatic brain injury model system, spinal cord injury model system, neuro recovery network site, um, which is kind of part of the spinal cord injury rehab and research, but it is um, a designated research site. And then for sports medicine highlights, I know a lot of people are into sports. Um, we have the Jameson Crane Institute, one of the nation's largest, most comprehensive sports medicine facilities. You're working really right alongside other um, sports med docs, uh, ortho surgeons, very interdisciplinary, um, the athletic trainers, the therapists, include a motion analysis lab. And we get great access to these experts in the field that come and do curriculum for us. Um, optional sideline sports coverage. A lot of our residents that applied sports have chosen to um, go and have these opportunities covering football in the fall. And we have plentiful adaptive sports opportunities as well. Um, monthly interest group meetings for adaptive sports and one of our nationwide children's faculty, Dr. Napolitano and the therapist join. And it's any sport you can think of from sled hockey to basketball to soccer. Um, there are dedicated therapists for each sport that go to the practices and participate. So you, it's already nice and established and you can loop into whatever you're interested in. Um, and then just to highlight uh, the ultrasound curriculum, not only is it longitudinal now, um, we also get access to ultrasound machines at all times in our workroom, the portable um, ones on the that are hooked up to the iPad. So you can practice as much as you want. And we have multiple faculty, faculty members that utilize MSK ultrasound regularly including a dedicated rotation with world-renowned expert, Dr. Jeffrey Strakowski. He's written textbooks on the matter, which I'll highlight. And I'm on rotation with him right now, and he's teaching a foot and ankle ultrasound course locally, and I got to go and be the um, foot model and learn um, during these two days. It goes on tomorrow, and then Saturday's cadaver injections. So you get looped into um, things like that, too, which is awesome. And then there's exposure to advanced therapies too, um, like PRP, uh, our sports attendings, Dr. Berrio was just doing a IRB comparing PRP to um, mesenchymal stem cells harvested from abdominal fat, as well as um, our residents were able to get looped in on research projects as well. Two of our, my co-residents just did a research project for PRP in shoulder injections for spinal cord injury patients. So definitely great resources. And then we do get cadaver ultrasound injection labs to practice. And then we're opening again, the cadaver lab for our anatomy sessions, which had been um, closed because of COVID, but those are starting back up in terms of um, actually going through prosected cadavers for each um, muscle system. And then definitely in a, innovative research. Um, I can talk more. Currently, we do a, we are required to do a case report QI. Many residents choose to do more research. And then we're trying to um, make their requirements a little more robust. So either submitting um, those things for publication just to go through the process. So not necessarily accepting so it's not in the hands of an editor, but getting practice with submitting to journals as well. And there are a lot of opportunities. There was the brain machine interface, and then there was um, recovery rapids, which was um, interface with like a rapid video game to help stimulate brain recovery. Those are our salary um, that listed, and then we get paid national membership to AAP and R, AAP, AANEM, um, and the salary there is pretty comparable to the region and definitely plenty to um, live in Columbus. Columbus is a very affordable city. Um, and then other things I wanted to highlight on here, um, if you have a dependent or traveling with a spouse or wanna get your MBA, one of our residents um, is currently getting their MBA at night, which is nice. Our program is flexible enough that he's able to do that. 
It's free tuition um, for employees and then half price for dependents, including spouses. Um, and then our attendees will give us some perks for football and basketball tickets if they're giving away their tickets. Um, you are able to moonlight um, and conferences with first author, author poster. Um, so it can just be a case report. You get $1,500 to go to that conference. And then in addition to the conference money, we also get educational money um, that if you use all that $1,500, you can also use your book money. Um, and that goes up every year. And then for, we used to get technology money, but now they're actually giving the new residents a laptop, which is awesome. And then we have great facilities. Those are some of the exercise facilities at Ohio State. Um, we got a new resident gym, which we're really excited about. And the resident lounge also does offer free food. I mean, sometimes they're slim pickings, but you can definitely, if you are committed to getting free lunch, there's always Uncrustables and cereal and hard boiled eggs. Um, you would name it. And then we have several accredited fellowships. So interventional pain medicine, technically through the Department of Anesthesia, but actually the last two years they've matched both um, the people they've matched have been PMNR. So four PMNR people over the last um, two years and took two of uh, the residents over the last two years from Ohio State. Pediatric PMNR, so Nationwide Children's Hospital. Like I said, great children's hospital. One of our um, residents that just graduated is the current fellow. They take one to two fellows a year. Non-PMNR sports medicine, so through the family medicine department. Um, neuromuscular fellowship through neurology non-accredited fellowships, cancer rehab, which we actually just matched our first fellow this past year in neuromodulation. And then um, here is a list of recent graduates, uh, where what fields they chose to go to and where they ended up matching. Um, it goes in order from oldest to newest. So those were our two graduates that did fellowship last year. One went to University of Toledo for sports medicine and then Dana Miller to Nationwide Children's for PEDS. And then um, you need a car, but our rotation sites are pretty close. Um, within that loop of 270, everything's about 20 minutes away. And like I said, we really do get that mix of um, community-based and academic-based practices. Here's our inpatient rehab facility. Some of our other, the cancer hospital, um, some of the other Ohio State hospitals on campus, and then our other rotation sites, Nationwide Children's, Grant Hospital, um, Riverside. And I think that's the VA at the bottom. Some of our other outpatient sites. And then really OSU faculty um, have been established leaders in PMNR for a long, long time. Um, you may not recognize some of those names. And I'll go to this slide. Like Dr. Bradham was an OSU alum, um, wrote the PMNR you know, textbook. Dr. Strakowski, as I pointed out earlier, a world-renowned ultrasound expert, um, has a great book with electrodiagnostic and ultrasound correlation. And then um, Dr. Peace, another forefather of EMG, um, we learned from him directly. And then just our faculty, just fly through this here. And I'll go, we have like a page, oh, here we go. All our inpatient faculty our inpatient at Mount Carmel that we do the consultant um, role for, for inpatient, outpatient faculty, um, our spine pain management faculty, and then the PEDS, which they have a lot. There's that fellowship here. And then our other offsite, um, apart from OSU faculty as well. And then our lovely residents, we like hanging out. And then I'll just flip through these slides about Columbus, and I just want to make sure you guys have time for questions. So amazing city, I can't brag about Columbus enough, fourth largest city in the US by population, was ranked number one zoo. I think that was actually, they also got ranked recently as number one again. Um, eight, number eight for growth among large metro areas, considered one of the top five craft beer production cities. Um, people, like I said, that's like 20 minutes away. People choose to live all over. There's great niche neighborhoods really fun things to do, um, great food and brewery scene. Just some fun pictures here. Actually really great park system too, um, very dog friendly. A lot of our residents have dogs, so we're always 
taking our dogs for walks, festivals, arts and music. I got Broadway tickets this year. Hopefully they don't get canceled, we'll see. Um, food, sports, all of our sports teams, and then our emails there. Okay. And then Alex is gonna type our emails into the chat, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but I wanna leave time. I think we have five minutes left for questions. Yes, five minutes left. Is this for us? What do res residents typically do on their free weekends? So we have a lot of free weekends in PMNR, which is awesome. Um, Alex has a kid, so his weekends probably are looking a little bit different than mine, but um, I really love trying different restaurants, um, different breweries. Um, I live in one of the little uh, local neighborhoods, Dublin, and they really built up um, the downtown area. They put a new North Market that has a different, like a bunch of different food stands. Um, and then there's a lot of outdoor things to do. Like this weekend, I'm going to try to go to a free play in one of the parks in Columbus. And then adaptive sports programming. Yeah. So as I mentioned, one of our dedicated faculty, Dr. Napolitano, and one of the therapists, Teresa Berner, um, they run collaboratively an adaptive sports and like meeting group with the therapist and any interested residents once a month. Um, and during that time, they basically go through and announce like all of the upcoming events and ways people can get involved and what they need people for. Um, and so any, basically any sport you can think of, we have here, they just had an event for sled hockey fitting um, for the fall. They, this weekend, there's an event for adaptive growing. Um, if that answered your question. And then another question about advanced versus categorical, um, one being more competitive than the other. I can take that really quick. Um, I don't think so. It kind of just depends on the year what people want. Um, Jen and I were both categorical. I know that I ranked categorical ahead of advanced personally just because I wanted to be in Columbus. Um, you know, I didn't want to move twice. Um, and so uh, I'd, I'd say it just kind of depends. But there's three, cat three categorical spots for advanced. Yeah, and I ranked both because um, I just, I wanted to be at this program. And then I guess I'll put community service for the residents. So being at Ohio State, I mean, you have a lot of opportunities for outreach. Um, there is, if you're interested, like a general global health organization. Um, and then there is also like um, community-based clinics, like through their medical school. Um, there are a lot of opportunities to get involved. Basically anything you can think of like through Ohio State, you can do as a PMR of it. And it's such a big city, there's tons to do. Yeah. With, yeah. With um, in terms of outdoorsy things, there's actually a lot. Um, so I can speak to that a little bit. I, um, my wife and I try and, you know, go on hikes and um, go camping as, as much as we can. So there's a really awesome um, state park about an hour away called Hawking Hills. Um, there's a national park two hours away, kind of up towards Cleveland direct direction called um, Cuyahoga National Forest or National Park, um, which is awesome. Yeah, uh, National Park is not far. Smoke, you know, Smokies are, are a day's drive. Um, there's tons of beautiful places to go. And then, of course, like, you know, Michigan, the Great Lakes are close by. Um, there's actually really great. I fish a lot. There's world class fishing here. Um, and so I, I like doing that quite a bit. So, so there's tons to do if you, if you want, but not, not necessarily classic like Colorado type stuff. That's what you're looking for. And there's some rock climbing, like um, the one of the facilities at Ohio State and they put a big rock climbing wall at one of the parks. So one of our residents goes with a therapist every week and we'll rock climb on those walls too. I don't know if I've I'm been to the Wayne, way, but I've heard, I've heard great things. I'm sure it's nice if it's a national forest, but I don't know. Yeah. Two minutes left. I can just give a, a quick 30 second plug um, if somebody wants to, uh, in, until I see a question, but I would say- um, Oh, I see super bike, bike friendly, bike. Yeah. super bike friendly, like bike paths. They really built up the river too. So I live 20 minutes away. I could, if I wanted to, I mean, 
it would be a long time, but I could bike to work. Like there's bike paths everywhere. Yeah. Same. I could, I could bark to bike to all but two rotations. Um, I'd say, you know, Ohio State's a, a great, well-rounded program that can set you up to do you know, really anything you want to do, whether it's um, set you up really well to get any fellowship you want, set you up to, to just go get a job and really kind of practice in any field you want to do, and whether it's more procedural, inpatient, outpatient, kids, not kids. Um, so, you know, consider us. Oh, yeah, we make people say the, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Technically, I think it is the, but we don't enforce that. Someone asked if we refer to the program as D, Ohio State Penal Residency. TM. There was a push to trademark it for a while, I think. <laughs> yeah, the trademark. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you to the Ohio State for their presentation this evening. Oh. We've really enjoyed having <clears throat> we've really enjoyed having you. I apologize for leaving off the the in my initial introduction. I will make sure to get that right next time. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, everyone. And um thank you for leaving your emails in the chat. Um if Either of you want to stay on for a couple minutes and moderate and see if there's any last minute questions as we move into our next presentation, you are more than welcome to.